So what do you do if you're shooting a target and you just can't get everything in field of view? Well, mosaics are your answer. So in this video, I'll show you how to shoot the mosaic with your ASI Air and how to process them on a Mac with a stitching program. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm in plan mode and I'm going to go into the search objects and pull up the Rosette Nebula. Now if the image looks like this for you, you just need to zoom in. I don't know why it does this occasionally. But as you can see, the field of view here with this 400 millimeter lens, I cannot quite get it all. So we hit the mosaic button. And now with the panes tab, you slide this in either direction if you want more in the X or more in the Y until you have enough tiles to fit your subject the way you want it. The overlap here, the more overlap you have, the more choices you have for the software, but of course, the more panels it's going to take in order to do this. Uh, I've tested it with 20 and it works great. Now, if the position is not quite right, look what you can do. You can drag the image to anywhere you want and get it precisely where you are. And that's really the beauty of the tool in Sky Atlas. Now, if you'll notice the orientation in this particular image is up and down, where just a few seconds ago I had it at an angle. And the reason it's doing that is because I'm adding footage later the next day. So I want to turn it on the next day. The ASI Air doesn't know the direction of my mount, my telescope. And so the best way to do this is to go ahead and set up outside get everything aligned and shoot so that the ASIR can get calculate the correct angle of the target you're going to shoot. So when we're happy with this, we'll go on to the next step. And then if you look in the lower right, it'll say a plus plan. So we're going to add this to the plan. So this will take us over to the plan mode. And you can see here I have some old plans. So I'm going to go ahead and delete those. And now you will see the four images and then we're going to go into the detail mode of each image and then set a sequence. Now incidentally, you can look at each one of those by just hitting the Sky Atlas button and then you can see which one of these corresponds to the mosaic that you're going to shoot. But when we're ready, you hit this plus button inside one of them and then you can set your sequence schedule. Now the absolute easiest way to do this here is to set your filters and plan everything right here. However, because I want to shoot this in hydrogen alpha, I don't have a strong enough signal to plate solve at the maximum center exposure time of 20 seconds. So to deal with that, I'm going to use a CLS filter to record a sequence of all of these and then I'll put them in the library and then I'll show you what I'm going to do after that. So here I'm going to set the exposure time fairly short because I just want to be able to plate solve and have these in my library so that I can reference them at any time later on. So I'm just going to do 60 seconds for each one and then I'll repeat it say a few times and then I'll do that for every pane in the mosaic. So now to run this plan you actually have to hit the little button and activate each one of these that you want to do. So once that act is activated, we'll go back to the plan mode and execute it and run this sequence. And now the mount's going to slew to the first one and begin this. And so I'll pause the video and skip ahead when this is all done. Now here I've gone into the image management for those CLS images and I'm going to plate solve and then just say go to. And as long as you're in the preview mode, you can go to that position. What I need to do is, once I get there, I have to change this to the CLS filter in order for it to plate solve. And once this is plate solve, I'll go into the auto run mode and I'll shoot however many images that I need for that particular location. And so tonight, because I only have about an hour and a half or something like that, I'm going to do only four images so that we can just get some base data so we can understand how to do this procedure. So incidentally, you can always look at Sky Atlas and see which target you're shooting, but notice that the mosaic plan is not here because of the way I had to do it as my workaround. So like I said before, if you can do this all within the plan mode, it is far easier to do it that way. And it really depends on the filter that you're using and whether you can plate solve or not. So after each one of these is taken for a particular position in the mosaic, I have to go back 
and reposition the scope to the next one and I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we'll move on to the next step of processing. So this is how I have everything organized. 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 1, and 2, 2. And then here I've done the processing and Cyril creates these two files. But if you look at one that I have not processed yet, then we have the four folders of the biases, darks, flats, and lights. And then the lights here are the four fit files. And then I just move the previews into a new folder in case I want to reference them. All right, so I'm here, here in Serial, and I've run one of the uh, stacking procedures for one of the subs. And so I want to open up the result. And I'm going to do the same thing for, with all of these. And I'm uh, to have a standard stretch, I'm going to use the histogram transformation and use the auto function. And this will give me a uniform stretch for all the images. And then if we want to do any more adjustments on the final image, we can do that all at one time. So then I'm going to download this. And I always like to save the stretch in a fit. And then I'm going to save it again as a JPEG. Okay, so I've renamed all these images and I put in 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 1, and 2, 2. And it looks like one of the images uh, didn't stack due to an error. And so if we go through it here, you see that you have one on the left, one on the right, and then the left corner, and then the right corner. Okay. Now, I only had just a little bit of time, so we're only looking at about 20 minutes of data. But you get the idea, and if you have more data, of course, you're going to have better results. Now, how I'm going to do this, I'm going to use an open source plugin called Huggin, and this works on various platforms. So if we launch the app, and then we load the images, so we navigate to the folder, and we're just going to select all of these, and say open. And they give an error here, and I've seen this uh, a lot of times when you're dealing with astrophotography. So you need to enter in the focal length, and even though mine's a 400 millimeter lens, it, the uh, serial thinks it's 385. So I type this in, and then it'll calculate the depth of field. I'm sorry, the field of view. And now here is where uh, things are a little bit wonky with this plugin. I can't seem to get this to work. I just have this little image. But anyway, the order here doesn't really matter. There are four panes in there. And the next thing we want to do is just hit the Align button. Now, I cannot scroll down. I don't know why. Um, but they give you this tiny little preview. And then we're just going to say create panorama. Now here I'm going to choose a JPEG. And let's take this up to 100. And then they're going to ask me to save the data in which we will. We'll just save it. And then this is the image. It's going to go through its processing. And so here is the PTO file, which is the project file for the Huggin plugin. And then we can see that we have our image. So let's uh, open this up. And now you have a much bigger image. And the stitching did uh, pretty well. I think uh, I can't really see any, you know, where the, they join or anything like that. And so now you can make adjustments as you want on the final image, such as the black point and whatnot. So now that we have this composite image in one particular narrow band, well then you can just go into the image processing and you can do RGB composting with the other ones if you have the data and then you can create a full color image. Now due to the weather, I do not have enough time to do any more uh, filters because it's going to be another week of rain every day. So. But you get the idea here of how powerful the stitching is. And then when you zoom in, you have a much higher resolution on the individual um, part of this image 
in contrast to say just using a wider angle lens because because you use a telephoto lens and you got up close and you took images there well then I think the overall image will be better as you zoom out so it's really powerful to, to do mosaics it is a bit of work but I think it's worth it in the long run so anyway I hope you found that helpful and I'll see you next time